want you to listen to me. This is crucially important. Everybody's missing the point. The incredible scandal here is the Obama administration was investigating top officials in the Trump campaign, maybe even Trump himself, during the course of the election. Listen to this from the Washington Post today. U.S. investigators have examined contacts Attorney General Jeff Sessions had with Russian officials during the time he was advising Trump's presidential campaign, according to people familiar with the matter. They were investigating a sitting United States senator who hadn't done anything? They're investigating a sitting attorney general who hasn't done anything? Based on what premise? The fact that he was advising Donald Trump? Is this not appalling and shocking to you? The focus of the U.S. counterintelligence investigation has been on communications between Trump campaign officials and Russia. The inquiry involving Mr. Sessions is examining his contacts while serving as Mr. Trump's foreign policy advisor in the spring and summer of 2016, one person familiar with the matter said. Why? Why are they investigating Sessions? On what basis? On what basis whatsoever? He has no financial links to Russia. He holds no quarter or special brief for Russia. This is astounding to me. Absolutely, I am telling you as somebody who served under an attorney general, directly under an attorney general, I can't believe this. What we need to find out here, ladies and gentlemen, is what the Obama administration and the government agencies under the Obama administration was doing during the course of this election. That's what we need to find out. Listen to this story in the New York Times. Obama administration rushed to preserve intelligence of Russian election hacking. You see how coordinated it is? It's coming from the top. These damn fool Republicans in Congress, it is pathetic. They are sickening. In the Obama administration's last day, some White House officials, White House officials, that is, Obama's underlings, scrambled to spread information about Russian efforts to undermine the presidential election and about possible contacts between the associates of President-elect Donald J. Trump and Russians across the government. So what information did Obama and his surrogates in the Oval Office around the Oval Office, have about Donald Trump and his advisors and people on his staff that they were spreading around the government because they knew it would leak. They're the fingerprints. Now, the New York Times doesn't intend it to be so. There are the fingerprints right there. Former American officials say they have two aims, to ensure that such meddling isn't duplicated in future American or European elections and leave a clear trail of intelligence for government investigators. No, 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 no. Their goal. Let me tell you what's going on here. Here's the phrase. Here's the phrase. This is a silent coup. Silent, nonviolent coup. That's what's going on here. That is what's going on here. The Obama administration holdovers, the Obama administration lackeys outside of government, Schumer, Pelosi, all of them, this is exactly what's going on. And the rest of the New York Times piece is mostly propaganda. But right up front in the first paragraph, they give it away. So, in other words, this information that was being collected, maybe by the NSA, the CIA, the DIA, the FBI, who knows? Maybe all of them. Was obviously provided to the Oval Office. Because it says right here, in the Obama administration's last days, some White House officials scrambled to spread information about Russian efforts to undermine the presidential election across the government. So they gathered the information... And they were spreading it across the government for the purpose of having it leaked a felony to the media. Correct? How else do you read that? Well, there's no other way to read that. But they did more than that. They had to create the circumstances where they would get the information and be able to spread it to other departments and agencies before they leave office. 
because the current policies in place didn't allow that. So you know what they did? We talked about this before, the great Michael Walsh piece in PJ Media. They gave, on the way out the door, the NSA broad new powers to share all kinds of intel information with all kinds of agencies and departments. On the way out the door. I'll get to that in a minute. We'll be right back. We're piecing this together. And I hope you're sticking with us. Just a few weeks ago, my buddy Michael Walsh over PJ Media noticed something. A little remarked upon item in the New York Times in January of this year. It said, in its final days, the Obama administration has expanded the power of the NSA to share globally intercepted personal communications with the government's 16 other intelligence agencies before applying privacy protections. Got that? Before applying privacy protections. In other words enabling people to leak it more easily, or people have it without the proper protections. The new rules significantly relax long-standing limits. This is the New York Times. Again, the new rules significantly relax long-standing limits on what the NSA may do with the information gathered by its most powerful surveillance operations. Now, take that story. Take that story, and the story I just read to you from today, same newspaper, New York Times, in the Obama administration's last days, some White House officials scrambled to spread information about Russian efforts to undermine the presidential election across the government. So, they knew exactly what they were doing. They changed the NSA rule. They gathered the information at the White House. They spread the information to their plants throughout the federal government. And now you know what's going on. Meanwhile, prior to that, in the summer, they were surveilling and eavesdropping on per- potentially Donald Trump, clearly his senior transition folks and campaign folks, and trying to, ladies and gentlemen, not get to the bottom of the Russian influence in the campaign, but to destroy the Republican campaign. And now to destroy the Republican presidency. I don't care if you're a populist, a nationalist, a conservative, a moderate Republican, an independent. It's time to speak out. This is an attack on our constitutional system. This is an attack on the election. Screw all the policies. This is deeper than that. It's deeper than that. We have a silent coup attempt going on here. And clowns on Capitol Hill that call themselves Republicans are so stupid they're joining in the choir. This was set up early on, months ago. An entire coordination effort going on here by the fifth column. This isn't a conspiracy. I got this from the New York Times and earlier the Washington Post. Are they in on the conspiracy? Are they in on the conspiracy? They're investigating a United States senator, now an attorney general, who had a chance meeting with the ambassador to Russia, later had an actual meeting with the ambassador of Russia, says, hey, look, talking about the campaign or anything like that, who had absolutely no reason to cover up those contacts. None whatsoever. And thus did not. This is what happens when you take a great man like Mike Flynn and you throw him to the wolves. And you throw him to the wolves. Does the Vice President of the United States, who participated in that, does the Vice President of the United States think he is immune from these attacks one day? He's not. They don't want Mike Flynn. They don't want Jeff Sessions. They don't want Steve Bannon. They don't want Steve Miller. They don't want Kellyanne Conway and Priebus and the rest. They want Trump. And they want Pence. That's what they want. That's what they want. By hook or by crook. 